Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Has your wife been more active in the adultery forum than your own marriage? Who knew infidelity had a social media presence? Today on our space, the mice will play when the cat's away. Up first, Opie's wife was more dedicated to her side gigs than her marriage. Who knew she was such a multitasker? I caught my wife cheating a second time. Questions about exposing her and her affair partners. Married to my wife, Betty, for six years. I travel for work several times a year for training and support. Never had any reason to suspect her of cheating until last year. Then I started seeing signs like her being out more, buying new clothes, and being overly protective of her phone. When I would ask her questions, she would give me vague and evasive answers. Also, our sex life wasn't as good as it used to be. I had a couple of conversations with her and she assured me we were fine and that she was just focusing on improving herself. Still not satisfied, I cloned her iPhone to my iPad and I was able to read her texts and emails, including a bunch she had tried to delete. It was so much worse than I thought. She was talking with several guys and had slept with most of them. I took screenshots of everything, including pictures they had traded. She was meeting them at our house when I was out of town on business. I spent a whole day at work just reading everything and trying to make sense of it. I had another trip planned that month and all I could think about was what was going to happen while I was gone. The next day I made a plan to confront her, but I wanted more evidence so she couldn't deny it and say I was delusional. So I rigged up two IP cameras, one in the living room and another in our bedroom and hooked them to my network area storage box. When I got back from my trip, I had more than I bargained for. She had two different guys over while I was gone. And what really floored me was seeing her enjoying acts with them that she never would do with me. I did a deep dive and found out all the personal info on the guys she was talking to. Both of the guys on the video were married. One is even a deacon at our church. I had another trip a week later and got more videos with a third guy. I was home for about three weeks straight and kept a close watch on her, volunteering to go on errands with her and such. Then I told her I had to go to Phoenix on a short notice, but I would only be gone two to three nights. Sure enough, she set up a date while I was gone. So I faked a trip to the airport and checked into a local hotel with a plan of showing up at the house 20 minutes before her date was supposed to show up. I got to the house and let myself in and found her getting ready. She was shocked to say the least. I showed her the videos and said I knew everything and we were done. She pleaded with me to stay and work things out. She promised to change and said how ashamed she was. I told her she would have to cut all contact with the guy she had hooked up with and if anything like this ever happened again, I would be out of the door. I said she needed to make a list of who she slept with and when. If she wasn't completely honest, I would know and we were done. We also had to go to couples counseling as well to get to the root of why she cheated. In the meantime, I contacted her three affair partners in person and showed each of them a short video clip featuring them. I said they needed to block all contact with my wife, even so much as a text or call and I would find out and send those clips and text messages to their families, friends and coworkers. We did the therapy and things were better for almost a year. One thing I never told her was how I found out and that I could still read her texts and emails. Trust but verify, she started a conversation with a guy, trading nudes and sexting, falling back into her old habits. I set up another fake trip and she set up another date at her house. This time I waited down the street in a rental car and watched the guy walk into my house. I walked in on them in the bedroom with my cell phone recording. I started cursing and yelling at the top of my lungs. It scared both of them and they jumped up. She was crying and he was trying to get his pants back on. He ran out and I went in to confront my wife. I told her we were done and she needed to leave. She pleaded with me and promised to make it up to me. I said she had 48 hours to confess to her parents and friends how she threw away our marriage before I started sending out her video highlight reels to everyone. I tracked her new affair partner down and sent their text messages and cell phone footage to his wife. Betty, my soon to be ex-wife, has called me several times. She's in a panic mode. Her new affair partner has told her about her wife getting my email package and Betty is begging for mercy and for me to stop. At this point, I just want to sit back and watch the world burn. I showed my evidence to my best friend and his wife. He said to move out, but his wife is siding with my darker side. She said to expose all her partners and go scorched earth. I'm torn right now as I realize I'm still in pain and just want to lash out, so I might not be making wise decisions. The one thing I do know is I don't want her to spin this breakup into being my fault. Add on. Tuesday morning, I got a call at work from Betty and she is in shock. She just got served the divorce papers. Kudos to my lawyer for expediting that. She says she understands but wants to talk things out. I've spent the last couple of days in a hotel but I told her we could talk when I came home. She said it felt like her life was coming apart of the seams. 
She got a call from our pastor's wife saying it would be best if she resigned from the committee she was on at our church. Three out of four of her affair partners have contacted her about having their lives blown up. Two are confused because they followed my suggestions. They cut all contact with her in exchange for my silence. Her best friend calling her crying because she and her husband were fighting after I talked to them the other night. I asked if she had told her family or any of her friends yet, and she said just a few. I said I would be reaching out to them soon to let them know if she hadn't. She swears she still loves me and wants to stay with me. I told her I should have left her when I found out she cheated the first time. I told her I had copies and read every email and text she had sent or received for the last three years, along with her Snapchat, so I knew everything. All the conversations and all of the trading of pictures and videos, even the ones she thought she had deleted. I said there is no way I could trust you and without trust, there could be no future or love. The only thing left for us to do together is divorce and go our separate ways. Let's get a quick reaction from the community. I agree 100% with your friend's wife. Expose everything she has done to anyone who will listen and some who don't want to hear it. Then ghost her and let your attorney do all the communicating until the divorce is final. The OP replies, I made my wife write out a timeline of who and when she cheated on me. Turns out there were six guys, three of whom she only saw once or twice. The first guy she hooked up with was one I got on tape. I sent out info to all the wives this morning, and I got a call back from one of them within minutes. She asked a lot of questions and said she had suspected him before, but just never could prove it. She thanked me for giving her what she needed. The newest affair partner was removed from his house and charged with domestic battery. He called me to give me a piece of his mind and made a few threats. First off, you suspected your wife was cheating and you did what any reasonable person would do. When you saw those texts and emails, your heart must have dropped faster than a teenager's grades after discovering video games. Then came the hidden cameras, a genius move. The revelations kept coming, each one more jaw-dropping than the last. Two guys on one trip? Your wife was more industrious than a squirrel in autumn. Her partners though, a deacon? Whoa, was not expecting that. Therapy brought a brief respite, like a band-aid on a bullet wound, but old habits die hard, and Betty's phone became her confessional once again. Your second sting operation? Bravo, OP. You could teach a master class in deceitful detective work. Now, as you prepare to unleash Betty's greatest hits on an unsuspecting audience, remember, you're not just burning bridges, you're torching the entire village. But hey, some men just want to watch the world burn, and you've got front row seats with popcorn in hand. Update, six days later. I gathered a large amount of evidence before I confronted my wife, Betty. I gave her 48 hours to tell her friends and family to take responsibility for wrecking our marriage before I did. When I reached out to some of our friends, they were either clueless or had heard a very homogenized version of what happened. I had already sent most of the evidence to the wives and colleagues of repair partners, so I put together a group text to send to all of our friends with a Dropbox link that included my descriptions of the events for the past two years, text messages, quite a few, nude selfies she sent out, very explicit x-rated, the timeline of her affairs she wrote out when we reconciled the first time. Snapchats I was able to save. All four videos of her and her affair partners. The last video and a couple of selfies were included in the open text as well as in the Dropbox. Plus I included my permission for any of my friends to get a piece of that and a warning to the wives that Betty preferred married men. A similar text and email was sent to her family members. I had spent a couple of nights in a hotel after confronting her but I came back to our house about the time the texts went out. Didn't take long before both our phones were blowing up. Betty was screaming at me for airing our dirty laundry to the world and my only answer to her was, what part of it wasn't true? She has since moved to her sister's or back home with her parents. Fallout. Her fair partner, who was a deacon at our church, has left the congregation. Our pastor's wife suggested that Betty resign from the church committee she was on. Three out of four of her fair partners are facing divorce. The other is stuck in purgatory. Her best friend and her husband are separated due to the fact he now knows she was enabling the affairs and kept a secret from even him. I had a few negative responses including one from Betty's sister, but the majority of them were offering condolences and support. I have a snake of an attorney and he is in complete charge now and I have blocked all contact with her. One of the last messages I sent to Betty and her sister was, actions have consequences. You played the long game like a seasoned poker player. And when you finally laid your cards on the table, it was a royal flush of infidelity. The 48 hour ultimatum, chef's kiss. Giving her just enough rope to hang herself with her own guilt before you dropped the bomb. The group text with the Dropbox link was a stroke of genius. It was like sending out wedding invitations, but instead of celebrating love, you were commemorating betrayal. The fallout was spectacular. 
the deacon fleeing the congregation, Betty being subtly nudged out of her church committee by the pastor's wife. Ah, divine retribution. Do you think OP handled the evidence like a champ? What would you have done differently? Next up, OP's wife's affair lasted 11 years, proving that sometimes, happily ever after, has an asterisk. Wife of 38 years having an affair since the past 11 years. Dang, don't even know where to effing start. I'm hurting like hell. The most sickening pain in my chest ever since I had a heart attack some decades ago. Me, 68 male, and my wife, 66 female, have been together for the past 38 years of our lives. Until recently, I considered us one of the most blessed couples ever. We barely argued, never hit each other, and we've been through so much together. As for how I caught her after 11 years, I didn't. My son, 33 male, who lives in another state, was here to celebrate his new job as a mechanical engineer, came to our home, notified me of what's been going on, though I don't know how he caught his mom. God, I feel like such a big effing chump. My son introduced me to Reddit, and I got to know that my wife is active in a forum called Adultery on this app. I saw her account. I vomited after seeing her posts and comments on that forum. She wrote about how much better in bed her lover is, how strong and muscular he is, about how much gullible and naive I am. And the effing thing is, she was a master deceiver. I had full access to her phone and never found out a thing to be suspicious about. Turns out she only used to delete everything regularly and used apps which I don't even know about to deceive me further. Honestly, when I found out about everything, I cried. I don't think I've cried like more than maybe five times in my adult life. I was nauseating so hard and vomited all over the floor when I found out. My son also teared up as he stood next to me and showed me her account. He also told me that he has already confronted his mom about it and she begged him not to tell me, but I'm glad my son told me the truth. I love my son so much. I've tried calling Kelly, she hasn't picked up yet, and I have the feeling she won't be coming back home, probably went to her lover. Honestly, I don't know how you can be so cruel to someone who you effing claim to love. She effing lied and manipulated me for 11 effing years. I couldn't be that cruel to someone who I hate with all my being. I don't know why. Why not just ask for divorce? Why not just ask for one of those effing open marriage crap? I might have considered it. Why the F would you want to ruin 11 years of my life? What the F did I do to deserve this? I just want to know the answer to all of this crap. I know my situation is hopeless. I just wanted to write whatever the F I'm feeling since my son told me that there are support groups for people like me on this app and this is one of them. But I know dang well that nothing's going to change anything now. My situation is just pure agony. So maybe I'm just venting a little. Thanks for the advice. My son has calmed me down enough to not do anything I will regret later. I've talked to my lawyer and he told me to block Kelly from all places and only communicate under the presence of lawyers though he has told me to not prevent her from getting inside the house in case she decides to come back. Regarding therapy, son has already booked one. I'll be going soon. I'm still pretty dazed, but at least I'm not having a panic attack now. I joined some forum or subreddit called Support for Betrayed, and it was nice and sad, seeing that I'm not alone. Currently, I'm reading some relevant material about infidelity to gain more insight and peace of mind. I'm just baffled that I never caught her once in 11 years. So you're 68, and after nearly four decades of what you thought was blissful matrimony, you get blindsided by your son who comes bearing the worst news possible. Not exactly the kind of family reunion you were expecting, huh? Finding out through Reddit that your wife was leading a double life in the adultery forum? Yikes. You're right, it's a special kind of cruelty to deceive someone who trusts you implicitly. You're left feeling like you've been living in a house of cards, and it just took one gust of wind to bring it all crashing down. But let's focus on the silver lining. If there is one in this storm cloud, you've got a good lawyer and you're taking the right steps. Blocking her, only communicating through legal channels. Smart move. And your son, already booking therapy for you, is an absolute rock star. Joining support groups and reading up on infidelity is a great start. You'll find strength in knowing you're not alone, even if the circumstances are utterly horrendous. And while nothing can erase the past 11 years of deceit, you've got the chance to rewrite the next chapter of your life. So vent away, OP. Scream into the void if you need to. You've earned that right. And remember, it's not about what you did to deserve this. Sometimes people are just selfish, deceitful, and cruel. It's about how you rise from the ashes of this betrayal and reclaim your peace of mind. Cheers to new beginnings, however bittersweet they may be. What do you think? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.